Hi everybody, I am here today with a quick and fun tutorial for you for the Photo Bella design team. So this is going to be a two-part tutorial where I'm going to teach you how to make your own gift bag out of some decorative scrapbooking paper and some of the fun embellishments that come with the collections. This is the Photo Play Bell Floor Collection. You can get this on the Photo Bella website, but you can do this tutorial with any collection. The second part of the tutorial, I'm also going to show you how to make this quick and easy little tag that will fit down inside of the pocket of the bag so that this is for ready for a gift to be placed inside and given to the recipient. So stay tuned and head over to the Photobella online store linked in the description box below to pick up this collection and look for any other paper collections that you might want to use to make this nice little bag and tag. First I'm going to show you how to cut all of the pieces for your gift bag. For the first piece you will need to get two of the same types of pattern paper. The first one is going to be cut at nine and a half inches by 12 inches. And then on the nine and a half inch side, I have scored at the bottom at a half an inch. On the 12 inch side, I've scored at nine inches and 11 and a half inches. And because this is hard to see, I have already folded it so you can see where my score lines are. So I have a half inch and then I have um, another score line at nine inches here to make this piece two and a half inches. And then down here at the bottom, this piece is a half an inch. Once you have all of your folds, we're going to actually cut. So we're going to cut this little corner piece out. And I've cut slightly on the diagonal so that this will be easier when I go to glue it. And then this one, I'm going to also cut just slightly on the diagonal here and straight up the score line. So this is what the piece will look like. And then when it's folded in, it's going to create the first side of our bag. Then the second piece of the pattern paper, it is 11 and a half inches by 12 inches. And it is scored on the 11 and a half inch side down here, it is scored at two and a half inches. And then on the 12 inch side, it's scored at nine inches and 11 and a half inches. So again, we've got this half inch tab, and then we've got this two and a half inch section, so our bag is nine inches. And then down here at the bottom, we have a two and a half inch section here. So on these folds, we are going to cut this piece off. Again, just slightly mitering that so that it will lay flatter on this one. I'm going to cut up slightly at an angle. And so now we have this piece here. We can actually go ahead and cut this piece off as well so that it is about a half an inch. You can leave it if you want to, it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut mine at a half an inch. That way whenever I go to fold in with my bag, it's easier. If you don't, you just have a bigger piece here as a tab. So now we have the second half of our bag. We're gonna set both of those pieces aside. Next, I'm going to cut two pieces that measure one inch by 12 inches of a coordinating color. This is going to be the trim. And I have used my Fiskars decorative punch on one edge. So if you wanna do that, you do that. If you don't, you don't have to. You can just use the plain paper with a straight edge. And then I'm going to make two handles. So these pieces measure three inches by 12 inches. And then I scored at one and a half inches. So this is what my piece looks like when I start three inches by 12 inches, scored in the middle at one and a half inches. And then I fold this together. Then what I'm going to do is add glue in here. I'm going to glue this shut so that my handles are the same color on both sides.
And then once I have this glued, I'm going to use my decorative punch on both sides. And just like with the trim, if you don't have a decorative punch, you don't have to do this. You can just leave your handle straight. So now that it's glued, I have my centers marked on one side and I'm going to stick this in here, line it up with the center so that whenever I'm finished, my pieces are actually centered as well. So I'm going to do this on both sides to create a second piece like this. I'm going to do this off camera because it is quite loud doing this. And then I'm going to show you how to assemble the bag. Next, we're going to be gluing the trim strips on the top of our pieces. So this is the bottom with the half inch score line. I've taken the first one and glued it to the top, but I didn't glue this one half inch tab here. This will actually wrap over the bag when we're finished to give it a more, a more finished look. But this is all glued onto the top. Then I did bend this at this score line and at this score line so that it will fold with the bag. Now I'm going to show you how I do it on this one so you can see how it goes. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just putting glue at the top part of this. So I'm not gluing the part down at the bottom that has all the actual scallop pieces. You can if you want to, but I'm just going to leave glue at the top and leave that open. And I'm going to add glue all the way into about a half an inch. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one as I did with the other one. I'm going to line this up at the top edge. And then this half inch piece is going to be open so that I can wrap it around once my bag is assembled. Now I'm going to use something to burnish this. So you can use a bone folder or anything else really just to make sure this is adhered really well. Make sure that it is straight across the top. So you will now see this half inch section. I'm going to just fold on the score line to crease that piece and I'm going to fold on this score line to crease this piece and we now have our trim on the top of our bag. Next we're going to flip this piece over and we're going to start assembling the bag itself. So we have this is going to be the bottom of the bag and I am going to connect this piece to the bottom of my bag. And to do this, I'm going to fold all of this stuff in so that I can see this piece better when I place it so that it is perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do next is put glue on this one half inch tab And then I'm going to glue my tab to the right side of this paper here, making sure everything is lined up. And then I'm going to burnish this so that it has a nice, good adherence. And when I open this back up, I now have the start of my bag. So next we're going to do one of the sides. Doesn't matter which one you do first, we're gonna do them in the same manner. So we're gonna start with just the small bottom tab and lifting up the trim, this half inch piece here. And then I'm going to just fold this up. I'm going to line up my edges. And then I'm going to flip this up. So what you will see is that the edges are nice and crisp and straight. I'm going to lay this one down flat now so that I can burnish it. 
And then when I flip it up, you can see those straight edges. The better that you burnish this, the better it's going to distribute all that glue so that you don't have any open pieces on your bag. So now I have my first side of the bag. I'm going to repeat that process with this second side to close my bag up. So again, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this half inch bottom tab, lifting up my trim, and I'm going to glue underneath of the trim piece all along this half inch tab. And then I'm going to line everything up on my bag. Make sure that it's straight and then adhere it together, being very careful because it will move until you burnish it. So I'm going to make sure that the bottom edge is down first. And then I'm going to hold my bag in place. I'm gonna flip it over and I'll be able to get my hand in here to burnish this down. And so now we should have our bag shape. The last thing we need to do is add glue to our little trim tabs and fold those over. So now we have our little gift bag. The next thing we need to do is add our handles. So you can put the handles on a couple of different ways. You can put them on the insides. You can put them on the outsides like this. Or you can put them like this and have a different look to your bag. Because the handles are a little bit shorter, it might be a little easier to do this. But if you want a traditional look to your gift bag, you can do this. And again, just having these pieces a little bit curved will make it a little easier. And I am going to be fastening these onto my bag, either with brads or with glue, just depending on what you would prefer. So I am going to glue my pieces on and I'm going to try to line this up a little bit. If I can, I'm going to line it up with one of the holes on the page or on the, the trim strip. And it's about, the edge of it is about one and a quarter inches from the edge. So I'm just going to add some glue here. And now I just moved it so it's about one inch from the edge. So I'm going to move it again, just so that it's in a little bit more. So one and a quarter inches from the edge. And I decided to glue mine on the outside. You can glue it on the inside if you want to. It doesn't really matter. If you want to attach these with brads, just pierce a hole through this, place a brad through it, and open the prongs to the back side. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side and one quarter inches from the edge, I'm going to line it up with one of the holes.
So now I have both of my handles on my bag. And the benefit of using brads rather than glue is that these will swivel so you can move them out of the way to put stuff in your bag. But it's okay if you don't like I did. You can just put something smaller in here. But if you do need something bigger, I would say definitely putting the brads on these instead would be nice because then they would slow out of the way so you could put your stuff in the bag. So this is the start of our gift bag and now we can add decorations to it to make it even prettier. So I have several different pieces from the collection of things that you could do. So you could take one of these small journaling cards and you can place it in the center of your bag. You could place a larger journaling card in the center of your bag. You can use some of the smaller pieces. You can use some of the chipboard stickers. It really just depends on the look you're going for. So I'm going to add this piece here to my bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add glue to three of the sides. I'm gonna create a pocket to put the tag down in, kind of like a tag birthday card or a tag card for this occasion. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm just going to flip this over and add a little bit of glue on three of the sides, leaving the top section open. You don't want to add too thick of glue so that your tag or your card won't fit in the pocket, but you don't want it to be too thin to where you don't get a good grip either. So I'm just going to eye this. If you want to measure it so that it's exact, you can. But I'm just going to keep mine there. I'm gonna look at it. Then I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna take my ruler. And I'm just going to use this to burnish this from the inside just to make sure that it has a really good adherence. And then I have my pocket that I can slide something down in. And I'm going to add some of the chipboard pieces to this. So there's lots of different options, different things. So I'm just going to play around until I find what I like, so I could put something like the tiara and the chair. Just really kind of depends on the look that you are going for or the occasion that you are wanting to use your bag for. So there's really not a right or a wrong here. It just kind of depends on what you like. So go ahead and play around with that until you find out what arrangement really works for you. For my decorations, I've used two of the cardstock stickers here and I've used two of the chipboard stickers here. I have poked holes in two of these and I've got some yarn here that I'm going to use to add these to the handles of my bag. So I'm gonna just take the first one. I'm going to loop it through the hole and I'm going to add this here. I'm gonna loop it around one of the handles and then I'm going to tie a knot in this. The other option is I can loop it through one of these holes and tie it and it'll hang down like this. So it really just kind of depends on the look that you want for your bag. So I'm going to take mine through the handle. going to cut a second piece and loop it through my second little piece of ephemera and then I'm going to tie this one I'm going to make sure that when it hangs down it doesn't completely cover the other one so I might tie this one up a little bit higher 
so that they are staggered a little bit whenever they are on the bag. So you just have to kind of eye this one and see what looks good for you on your bag. And then once I have this, I'm going to cut those tails a little bit. And then now when they hang down, we have both of them, but they're slightly staggered. So there is my completed front of my bag. You can decorate the back, you can decorate the sides. However you choose, this is your bag, so you can embellishment in any way you want. Next, I'm going to show you a really quick way to make a tag for the pocket. I have several different elements from the collection for my tag. I just took a piece of cardstock that measures four inches by five inches. I cut the corners off to make a tag shape. And then I have a piece of the opposite color that I'm just going to start with in the center. So I'm gonna glue this piece down to my tag front to give it a little bit of a dimension and a tone. You can use whatever papers you want. It doesn't matter here, just whatever you prefer. And then I'm gonna start building up and layering my pieces on here. So I'm going to use this image here, but I'm going to also have this frame. I've got some foam tape on it. I'm going to place this first. Just right here. And then I'm going to add this piece in. So part of it will be below, part of it will be above. Again, just giving it a little bit of dimension and texture. So this one's gonna be above, this is gonna be below. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on it. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be in whatever position you want it to be in. I'm going to use this lovely sticker from the cardstock sticker sheet and I'm going to place it right about here. Again, nothing is exact what I'm doing. I'm going to take now one of my foam squares and I'm going to pop this up. The L so that it sticks up. I don't want the sticker to be flat against the tag background. So you can either put this on cardstock and cut around it, fussy cut, and then pop it all up, or you can do what I'm doing and add some foam squares just to certain pieces so that it stays in place. Then I'm just going to add a few extra things. So I have this brad. I'm not sure yet if I want to put this in the center where I'm going to put my tag um, string. So I'm going to leave this for a second. I might place it somewhere else. And then I've got my little crown piece that I like. And then I've got this heart that was a punch out from here that I also want to use. So I'm thinking that I'm going to place this on top of the frame to hide that piece of foam tape and maybe put the heart here in the corner. But I also think I wanna add one of the stickers with some of the florals. So I'm gonna grab this. See where I want to put this. Maybe underneath here. I'm going to 
add my heart over here. And then I'm going to punch a hole for my strings. So for the front of my tag, I did decide to place one of the brads here and through the circle, I opened the prongs on the back side. You can cover this with a sticker or some of the paper if you want to. And my tag on the back is plain so I can write a message to the recipient. You can add more embellishments here if you want, whatever you want to do. But then this tag will slide right down into the pocket on my bag. So now I have my bag and I have my little tag that I can write the, mes the message to the recipient. So I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. You can use any paper collection that you want and use the same exact dimensions to create your own bag for any occasion. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to head over to the Photobella store to pick up this collection or any of the other wonderful collections that they have. Have a wonderful day.